Okay, hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating different performance levels and optimizations that can be used in my Destructibles plugin I made for Godot and C Sharp with pre generation and multi threading. So, to start off with, you can use dynamically generated sh shards, which just means gen generate in the game instead of pre generating them and having a bunch of shard scenes like I already have here. So, this does work, I just wouldn't recommend any more than 20s to 30s, or it does cause a lot of lag due to the complicated collision shapes that are generated and the delay. So to start off with, I have a standard 50 shard non-pre-generated mesh. You can see it's left empty. Preload shards is enabled. Clean collision shape is enabled because both of those should generally be enabled by default. I have simplified disabled as it does cause a bit of a delay. So you can see we're at about 2100 FPS up to 23. So that's stable out 2200 give or take. Press enter and it drops down to seven even with 50 shards just due to the complexity and each of them being a rigid body 3D. So with 20, it doesn't lag, and once they stand still, it is okay. But I would really recommend pre-generating them. So you can see, you don't have to... So if it doesn't matter about delay, you can simplify them in-game. It shouldn't cause lag due to it being multi-threaded. So you can see if I enable simplify collision mesh, enter. It takes a good few seconds, and there you go but we get zero lag, we're still at about 1800 FPS. So you do see a performance decrease, but it's minute at best. So how would you go about generating them then? So to generate them, you have your original shard scene as a GLB or .tscn. Select your destructible. Uh, if you want the performance improvement, you need to enable simplify collision mesh. I'd recommend all of these being enabled set where you want to save, so I have it set to save here, and press the Generate Mesh button. So depending on how big the mesh is, how many shards there are, it can take a while, so you can see that only took 5-10 seconds, but when I generated the 2500 shard mesh, it took almost 5 minutes, so you do just have to let it be, you can do other things in the background, it doesn't cause any lag watch generating, it just does take a hot sec. And then once we have that, you can still leave the fragmented scene and then just select scene, the newly generated shard scene that's pre-compiled. And when we go in, even with simplify collision, enter, instant spawning, no delay, and we get the improved 1800 FPS like we saw with simplify collision meshes enabled. So 50 is relatively low, like, if you're doing a large object, this is the realm you should be in. But let's say we want to do something higher. So assuming we're using, okay, so let's say you want to dynamically generate 100 shards. So we turn that off, disable simplification, and watch your FPS burn. <laughs> so I press enter key now. It spawns and FPS absolutely dies. It says 50, but it's probably, yeah, 2. 1 is more accurate. So, again, so now it's going to be more comparing how pre-generated works, because I don't see a point. Anything below 30 FPS is honestly unplayable. So, pr using a pre-generated mesh with 100. Oh, so, I press enter. Easily, 1800 FPS still. So we move up, 500, uh, keep selecting the wrong one, 500, these don't affect anything by the way, if you're using pre-generated, they're only for dynamic and, uh, well actually the preload shards does, but the clean collision and simplify collision mesh don't affect anything, unless you're dynamically doing it or you're about to generate the mesh, so 500, we do start seeing a bit of lag when it's spawned due to the massive amount of nodes. So 500, we do get some hiccups. This is still playable in my opinion, but we're locked at 30 while stuff is moving. 
So this is nearing the edge of what's recommended. Even though this is staying the same, it is using 500 because we're using pre-generated. So if we want to really break things, we go to 1,000. So at this point, it's less so a collision mesh or add-on issue, and more so Godot just can't handle an insane amount of rigid bodies, especially since these have complex collision shapes. So you can see this just absolutely tanks FPS. Also, the reason these shards are long is due to Blender's cell fracture. It's not due to anything with Godot. I've noticed that once you do anything above 100, 200, it starts giving you these really long, jagged lines for some odd reason. So this is basically unplayable. But let's just skip to 2500 and see if we can completely break it. <laughs> or at the very least, just push to 1 FPS for the end of the video. So enter, it spawns instantly due to it being pre-generated. You can see I do have explosion force enabled to a slight one just so it doesn't fall due to gravity only, since that's kind of boring. And it works, it's usable, but, well, usable is a strong word. It doesn't crash. So you could improve this by doing custom physics server things or trying to offload the physics server on another thread, but from what I've seen, it doesn't change things much unless you really went to the physics yourself or used a separate engine. So if we want to see how that would run without the pre-generation, we can select 2500, but I mean, there's nowhere further to go down than 1 FPS other than crashing. Uh, and, oh, it did show up, although it took a solid five, excuse me, five, ten seconds. And it is completely broken, so about half FPS for game two with pre-generated and one without. Anyways, that's a quick example of performance you can expect. So anything up to 100 is fairly usable, probably up to 250. Anything higher than that, even with pre-generation, you're gonna start suffering. A lot of lag just due to Godot's rigid body system not being the best performance-wise. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.